Welcome learners to the Shareability Online class. Uh, in this B5 Self-Study Science lesson today, we shall look at occupations, uh, occupations that can be that are performed in our community. Uh, we have several occupations, and among them, we can have crop growing. Uh, there are different types of crops that are grown in our communities and one of them are root crops. Root crops are crops that are that store food in the soil and underground roots. Examples of root crops include cassava, sweet potatoes, carrots, yams among others. Then we have stem tubers is another example of a root crop. Uh, stem tubers are crops which store their food in soil and underground swollen underground stems. Examples of stem tubers include cocoa yams, Irish potatoes, among others. We get carbohydrates from eating uh, stem tubers. Um, this is a summarized table of how different crops are propagated. Remember, crop propagation is the way crops are planted. Uh, caring for root crops, uh, we can care for root crops by weeding them to reduce competition for sunlight and to prevent spread of pests and diseases from the weeds to the crops and also to key, to improve on crop yields. Uh, there is another method of how we can care for our root crops by pruning. Uh, importances of pruning uh, or oh, what is pruning? Pruning is the cutting of is the cutting off of excess or poorly growing plants. Uh, pruning helps to reduce overweight on on plants and also helps to prevent competition for sunlight among among the crops group and also pruned materials can be used as mulches in our gardens which help to improve soil fertility garden tools used for pruning include pruning saws and scatters you can google and see these and see these tools how they look like uh, thinning is another method of caring for our root crops thinning which is the removal of excess or poorly growing seedlings in a nursery bed or our garden helps to create space for the crops to grow well and also helps to improve on yields uh, thinning is done by uprooting unwanted crops manually and the garden tool used for watering, sorry, for carrying out water and watering the crops is called a watering can. Another method that is used to care for our crops is plant training or staking. This is a method uh, which is practiced to enable our plants grow in the direction that we desire or a direction wanted by the farmer. Examples of crops that are trained or staked include tomatoes, passion fruits, vanilla, among others. Uh, let us look at uh, root crops, root crop pests and diseases. Diseases and pests that affect our root crops. Remember, pests are living organisms that destroy or that feed on our crops. They include birds, worms, insects, and rodents. And diseases are illnesses or sicknesses that affect living organs. Remember, plants and animals are living organs, so they are prone to diseases. Um, this is a summarized table showing the pests and diseases that affect various root crops. You can pause the video and go through this table very well. Uh, characteristics of root crop root crop pests uh, they have strong mouths mouth parts that cut and chew the leaves of our root crops pests that destroy the tubers have sharp claws which help them to dig the soil they have sharp incisors which bite or cut the root the root crops or tubers other pests that damage root crops have fingers which they, which they help to to which they use to uproot the root crop, iggy, apes, and mon monkeys. Other examples of pests include locusts, caterpillars, armyworms, 
sweet potato weevils, variegated grasshoppers, among others. How do we control pests in our gardens by spraying the crops with is with pesticides and insecticides? Uh, dangers of pests to crop farmers: they damage farmers' crops, reduce on the crop yields, and also cause decay in root crops. Uh, however, they can, however, however dangerous or disastrous these pests can be, they can be of a certain importance to farmers because some of them are a source of food, e.g. locusts, the insenene, they are a source of food and they are eaten by farmers' poultry, e.g. the caterpillars. Caterpillars are a source of food too farmers poultry uh, like the chickens and birds uh, methods of how we can control pests in our gardens and home areas we have mechanical methods uh, which include physical gardening silting silting uh, or setting up traps uh, um, staying Staying scarecrows are uh, like planting scarecrows in our gardens. The above methods can control pests like pigs, wild animals, and monkeys. Uh, then we also have biological pests control, the way a predator is used to control the pests. E.g., a cat can be trained to kill rats. That is a biological control of pests and diseases. Then we have cultural methods which include the following uh, crop crop rotation among others uh, harvesting and storage of root crops harvesting is the removal of mature and ready crops from the garden whereas storage is the keeping of the harvested crops safely for future consumption uh, you can go through these methods and learn how uh, Sweet potatoes, you can pause the video and read through and understand how sweet potatoes are harvested and stored. Also, the same thing as for the cassava. Uh, methods of storing root crops. Uh, we can have temporary storage, which is burying, burying the root crop in, sorry, under wet soil. Uh, this mostly applies for the cassava. And there are and also long term storage which includes storing the crops in the harvested crops in granaries and silos. Uh, granaries are, are local local storage facilities, well as silos are modern storage facilities and silos are mostly used for, for large scale storage. Uh, in the picture is an is how the granary looks like and this is how a silo looks like uh, thank you for watching the video thank you for supporting shareability uganda please consider subscribing to the channel if you're not subscribed and if this is your first time and if you enjoyed the video or if you learned something from the video please hit that like button to keep us going and to encourage us thank you very much